Muscles involved in hip and pelvic motions depend upon the direction of the movement and its position relative to gravity. So what is this alluding to? Gravity. You're going down with gravity or up and away from it, that's resistance. Eccentric or concentric contraction type, so that's what this is looking at. This is so this is saying what muscles are working or dependent upon or if you're doing flexion or extension, and if you're doing flexion and extension eccentrically or concentrically. The body part that moves will be the one that's least stabilized. Remember we went over that before when we were doing open versus closed chain movement. Do you remember that? What was closed chain movement? What segment would be unstabilized? If the hip was doing a closed chain movement this way, what segment of the hip joint is unstabilized? What are the two segments? Okay, well, origin and insertion, that's, a, well, that's in terms of which one is unstabilized and stabilized. What are the two segments? What, are the, what is the origin attached to and what is the insertion attached to? What segment is this? Pelvic girdle. Pelvic girdle. What segment is this? Thigh or upper leg. Um, femur is the bone, but the segment is called the thigh, right? Pelvic girdle and thigh. So if I'm doing closed chain, which segment is being moved? This one or this one? Uh, pelvic girdle. Pelvic girdle. Right? So the pelvic girdle would be the least stabilized. Standing on both feet. Um, we'll do that one. Proximal or distal? Close chain. In terms of absolutes, we said this is in every single joint in the body. We're looking at the proximal and distal segment. In closed chain, what segment is always moved? Proximal. Proximal. And in open chain, what segment is always moved? Distal. Distal. Okay. So this is closed chain. So it's the proximal segment, proximal segment of the hip, pelvic girdle. Right? Standing on both feet, contracting hip flexors. Both feet contracting hip flexors causes this, right? And what motion did we call this as a pelvic girdle? Versus this one. Pelvic bowl, where is it going? Anterior pelvic tilt, okay? So standing on both feet and contracting the hip flexors, the trunk and the pelvis will anteriorly rotate, right? Again, closed chain, segment moved would be segment is being moved? Is my thigh being moved? No? So this one's being moved. So the unstabilized segment is the proximal segment because it's being moved. Lying supine and contracting the hip flexors. So I'm laying on my back and I contract my hip flexors. My thigh is going to flex. So what segment is being moved? This one or this one? thigh, because this is open chain, open chain is the distal segment, distal segment to the hip is the thigh, this is being moved, so the unstabilized end is the distal end, which is the thigh, the stabilized end is the pelvic curve, it's not being moved, it's being stabilized. So this is an example of origin, or the proximal segment, unstabilized and moving, and this is an example of the distal segment that's unstabilized and moving. Does that make sense? Kind of? That was from last Wednesday. Hip flexors concentrically. Hip flexors concentrically moving the thigh toward the trunk. Hip flexors concentrically. If I'm lowering this down, what is that? Eccentric what muscle group? <coughs> Flexors concentrically. Is this eccentric? And what muscle group? Flexors or extensor? Flexors. Flexors. Hip extension moves eccentrically. Pelvis and trunk move downward slowly to the femur. Hip extensors doing an eccentric contraction. When you move your pelvis and your trunk downwards towards the femur, that's doing this, right? 
I'm doing what range of motion is this? What range of motion is this? Hip flexion. I'm doing hip flexion. I'm going down into gravity. So that's eccentric extensors. Hip extensors using concentrically. So I'm coming back from this position. I'm doing extension and I'm going up. So that's going to be concentric extensors. Eccentric extensors, concentric extensors. This is flexion concentrically by the flexors, and this is doing extension eccentrically by the flexors. So we're going to do eccentric extension, sorry, eccentric extensors, concentric extensors. The down phase of knee bending exercises, what did we say this contraction type was? Eccentric. Eccentric, right? This is eccentric. What muscle group does that at the hip? Extensors. What muscle group did that at the knee? I'm doing flexion eccentrically. So that's done by the extensors. That's what this is saying. The primary muscles involved are hip and knee extensors. They're doing eccentric flexion in both cases. My hip is flexing, my knee is flexing, but I'm doing it eccentrically, so that's my extensors. Right? Because extensors do the opposite range of motion when they are working eccentrically, right? Any muscle does its opposite range of motion to its name when it's working eccentrically, because it's lengthening. So this is extensors and extensors, eccentrically. Are you guys still really confused on this? <laughs> if the answer is yes, um, you, uh, you might want to spend some more time outside of class because we're done with that concept in class. It's not a shameful thing. I'm just saying, um, you know, if, you, if it's still struggling with you, it might be a good idea to maybe get a study group or maybe um, somebody else says in a different way or come and see me in office hours and I'll help you, okay? So you got to get that. Now let's look at quadrants. Again, so don't be, don't be like upset that you don't get it, but just work towards getting it. For some people, it just takes a lot longer than others. It just does, okay? If we look at the anterior quadrant of our hip, we're located right here. These are predominantly going to be your hip flexors, right? Because they're in front of. We look at line of pull. If it's located in front of the hip, what is it going to cause? Flexion, right? So these are going to be your main flexors, the ones that are located in your anterior quadrant. If it is a flexor, it is also an anterior pelvic tilter. Those are the same muscles. And you'll see that in your book, on your charts. It goes through all the charts of what every muscle does. There's nice big charts in your book. It says hip flexion. It will also say pelvic anterior rotation because those are the same muscles. If we look at medial, so the inside, if it has an inside line of pull, what is it going to predominantly cause? Adduction. A deduction, right? It's going to pull it in. <laughs> Adduction. This is also going to be your pelvic um, lateral tilters. Adductors will, depending on the side, there's not, a, I can't give you an absolute, but depending on the side, it will either do right lateral tilt or left lateral tilt. That's what these guys do. Posterior quadrant. If it's behind the joint center, what is it going to cause? If it's located this way, it's going to pull it backwards. That's extension. These are predominantly extensors. Um, also external rotators as well, but we'll get into that. Predominantly going to be your extensors. If it's an extensor, it's also a posterior pelvic tilter, because those are one and the same. Because when I do posterior pelvic tilt, I get hip extension. I'm just saying that was that pairing. And then if it's on the lateral,